Leland Vetter saw this firsthand when uh, he was covering protesters outside the White House last night. He joins us right now. Leland, what did you discover? Uh, good evening to you, Neil. Uh, when you go cover these protests, you're expecting perhaps for there to be violence, especially when there's going to be clashes with police. But this was different. We were really targeted. Our crew and I, uh, the crowd turned on us. It was clear it was organized. And then a mob descended on us, uh, chased us out. Uh, of Lafayette Park there. There were 50 or 60 people who no longer cared about the Secret Service or yelling uh, epithet at uh, President Trump or talking about that. Uh, they came out after us, chased us out, uh, took our camera, smashed our camera, took uh, my microphone, threw it at me. Uh, we took a lot of body shots in terms of getting uh, pushed around and shoved around, uh, and then finally made our way about two blocks to where we could find a police cruiser, and then the police there called in uh, reinforcements. It was the most scared I have been uh, since being chased out of Tahrir Square by a group from the Muslim Brotherhood. It was uh, it was clear had we not been able to get out, and our security that you see there did a great job, and the Daily Caller was able to capture it. Certainly helped. Had we not been able to get out, uh, things could have been uh, a lot lot worse. Leland, how did it start? Did they recognize where you were or where you were from, or just explain how they caught on to that? Exactly. There was, there was a fellow who was sort of a tracker, if you will. He was wearing a hoodie and kept badgering us, who you work for, who you work for, who you work for, and we'd sort of always move away. And then all of a sudden, he pulled out his phone and had on Twitter a screenshot of me and started passing his phone around to a couple of other people and said, he works for Fox News. And as soon as we came on the air and I started talking, big crowd came around, started chanting F Fox News uh, and pushed me forward. Uh, and then the crowd gathered, massed, and uh, attacked us. How threatening was this last night? I mean, this is across the street from the White House. Um, you know, a lot of people were concerned that the White House, I don't know if it was a formal lockdown, but they were concerned enough that the Secret Service, you know, uh, you know, up the ante there just to protect the president, obviously, to protect the area. This kind of sounded like it was escalating pretty quickly. No question about it. Uh, the Secret Service initially, and I say initially, for hours, was very restrained. But when the protesters started trying to push over the bicycle barricades that form the initial buffer of the White House security, the Secret Service let people chant and push. And as soon as they broke the barricades down, you saw the Secret Service come out with their riot gear, which I'd never seen before. Uh, those are all Secret Service hmm. officers who are normally just in plain clothes and uniform. And they take pride, really, in being uh, very discreet in how they sort of do their jobs, and there's never really a big show of force with the Secret Service. You know it's there, but they don't really show it. And last night they did, and this crowd was pretty violent. They broke down these bicycle barricades that are linked uh, by iron. And then when the Secret Service put them back up, the Secret Service used their handcuffs to try and lock the bicycle barricades together to keep the protesters back without having to use those riot shields. And the protesters broke through that wall as well of the handcuffs and mm. the padlocks and wire uh, so that they were right up against the Secret Service. The Secret Service showed incredible restraint, brought out pepper spray, et cetera. But once the mob turned on us, about 50 people, and started pushing us out of Lafayette Park, there was two blocks of no man's land. There was no police. Uh, there was nothing. We were on our own, save a couple of the other news organizations that were able to capture this. So normally now, it used to be that the Pennsylvania Avenue in front of the northern entrance of the White House uh, used to be a thoroughfare, and cars could travel to north to 9-11. That, that, that quickly ended. Um, and you're normally not, I believe, Leland, supposed to protest on the White House side of that, that, that you have to stay away from the fence across the street at Lafayette Square at Lafayette Park. This crowd, it looks like from some of the explanations you're given and some of the video we're now showing, they, they got to that fence. I mean, that, that exactly. had to get pretty hairy. Exactly. It really was pretty hairy. It was, it was, it was something I never thought I would see at the White House. Uh, and as you mo noted, Neil, uh, the White House is just to the right, screen right, of what you see in our camera and Christian Galdabini, who did an incredible job, is going to will pan over there in the in the video from last night, and you'll see the White House. It's only a hundred yards from where we were to the front door of the White House. Obviously, there's a lot of fences between there, but the Secret Service will allow anybody to come into Lafayette Park. You can protest, you can shout, you can do whatever you want, but the line is from the brick to the pavement onto what was Pennsylvania Avenue that people drove up and down, as you point out. And the Secret Service was very clear: you're not coming 
uh, over this line. But the Secret Service last night took a lot of abuse. There were firecrackers uh, thrown at him. That's the White House view, so you can see just how close uh, we were. There were firecrackers thrown at the Secret Service. Uh, it appeared as though there were a couple of bricks. There were a number of officers hurt, uh, Secret Service officers hurt. Uh, there were tons of water bottles uh, that were thrown, and they just stood there with their riot shields taking the abuse. And at one or two points, they brought out some pepper spray, but the protesters were, were really looking to pick a fight. Uh, and that's the, that's the feeling I got. They weren't interested in being heard or protesting with a single unified message. Uh, they were interested in instigating violence and pushing the Secret Service towards arrests and starting to grab people, et cetera. Uh, so my hat's off to the Secret Service, who showed incredible restraint uh, in the face of, of real provocation by these protesters who, when we, even when we tried to interview a number of them and talk to them and try to get some kind of explanation or cohesive message, they just weren't interested in. They weren't interested in talking. They weren't interested in, in explaining their uh, position. Uh, mostly they were interested in cussing about the president, et cetera. And we said, wait, what about the DOJ investigation? What about the FBI looking in uh, to the events in Minneapolis? They didn't care about any of that. Hmm. Very wild. Um, Lila, I'm glad you're all right. I'm glad your crew is all right. A little, uh, little, little sore from the but, thumping, but doing okay. Yeah, amazing. All right, thank you, Leland, very, very much.